There are some amazing new battery technologies coming. In fact, there are so many, it's hard to keep track of them all. But one of those that's very interesting was reported on by Clean Technica recently, liquid air energy storage. How does liquid air work? Is it going to work? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Offshore wind fans have been getting, well, there's been a bit of a challenge with offshore wind prices have been going up. But at the same time, battery energy storage prices have been going down along with solar panels, making solar and batteries probably a more viable alternative than offshore wind. Now, how can solar and batteries replace offshore wind? Well, by having enough battery storage, as in long duration energy storage, it means we don't necessarily need all the wind turbines that was previously thought. Liquid air is a battery storage mechanism that works for long durations. Lithium ion battery arrays have been doing much of the work for renewable energy storage, but generally they only last for a few hours, between two to four hours, depending on the battery. However, in some cases it's up to six, but that's still not long enough because the sun obviously generally goes down at about what? seven to nine o'clock depending on where you're located and then it's a long time before the sun comes up again in the morning it's longer than six hours anyway long duration energy storage systems of 10 hours or more including days weeks months even seasons are needed some people believe now i don't think that's true i believe that we only need around about 12 hours at the longest large scale long duration energy storage systems are in use now, but generally those involved dams, pumped hydropower. The water comes down, you use the, use the power to send it back up. It's essentially working as a giant battery. Then when the power comes, when, when the water's released again, it creates energy. However, the problem is if you don't have a river and a big dam, then that doesn't work for you. It's quite expensive to set up that kind of infrastructure, as you can imagine. Back in 2011, a liquid air battery was under development by the UK company Highview Power. In 2019, the company announced a long duration energy storage partnership in the US state of Vermont, though the US will have to wait for its liquid air system to materialize. It hasn't yet come. In 2022, Highview sidelined the Vermont storage project to focus on others, including its first full stage storage plant. Construction in the UK happened though. So in other words, there were already batteries using liquid air for long duration energy storage in England right now. High views liquid air battery literally uses liquid air as a storage medium. So it's just air in the battery. The system deploys electricity to super cool ambient air down to minus 196 degrees Celsius at which point it becomes compressed as a liquid. Not many people know that. If you make air really cold, it turns into a liquid. There it stays in its cryogenic state until electricity is needed when heat is applied to restore the liquid to a gas. This gas goes through a turbine to generate power. It's pretty simple, actually. I really like the idea. None of this makes any sense in a fossil fuel scenario because cooling air into a liquid takes a lot of energy, said Clean Technica. But in today's world of renewable energy, liquefied air can add value to a lot of expensive equipment that may otherwise be idled during periods of low demand. Last April, a company called Orsted and Highview announced the start of a joint analysis aimed at strengthening the investor case for offshore wind in the UK. They anticipate that co-locating energy storage systems with offshore wind farms, which put idled wind turbines to good use during periods of low demand, is something that's likely to happen. But I can see this also happening with solar panels. Storage systems like liquid air will play a crucial role in supporting the stability of the power network and improving the efficiency of wind farms, encouraging future investment in renewable energy that will boost the UK's energy security and cut consumer bills. However, since then, Solar panel prices have come down by 40%. That's in the past 12 months. Now, those prices are not necessarily passed directly onto consumers, and those prices apply to solar panels made primarily in China. Anyway, getting back to the batteries. Some long-duration energy storage technologies, which are based on synchronous 
generation, such as liquefied air energy storage, can provide advanced system services beyond electricity arbitrage, including grid stability, inertia, and dynamic response. These services will be especially important to support a high renewable system as a proportion of traditional thermal generation capacity that would normally provide such services reduces. Now, I'm personally not so convinced that liquid air batteries are needed. Now, they could be good in some places around the world, especially where uh, wind turbines are not able to efficiently use their power. However, we've actually got proof that grids can run without this super long duration energy storage in the Australian city of Adelaide, one of the world's only large city that can run on almost only renewable energy. The primary source there of energy is solar panels. There's a small amount of wind generation as well. And there are lots of batteries, but there is no super long duration energy storage. And for many parts of the year, that city runs on 90% renewables with almost all of that solar power. It's able to make it work through short duration battery storage. And that city will likely be 100% renewables, primarily with a focus on solar power and LFP or lithium iron phosphate battery energy storage, which should be able to run the entire city 24 hours a day within 24 months. That's where the future is heading in my view. But you know, new technologies like this could certainly work in different locations around the world. Keep in mind, 90% of the world sits on the sun belt where we get more sun than we could possibly need. But for that 10%, liquid air in those locations where there's not as much sun definitely could be a good use of storing energy. In those places, Often the sun doesn't shine for very long during the day, especially during winter, where you might only get, say, six to eight hours of sunlight. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and thank you for watching.